order to create opportunities to find and promote the prospects of future cooperation in the areas where the two countries, Vietnam and Australia, have mutual interests, while enhancing linkages between Vietnam and Australia on many other diverse fields, including the development of agriculture. The conference of celebrating 40 years of diplomatic relations Vietnam-Australia, Education for Development Cooperation and Future Orientation was held in Hanoi with the participation of more than 500 Vietnamese alumni and renowned Australian scholars and researchers. Sharing Vietnam Today review the achievements in developing land researches and farming methods in Vietnam through a conversation with Professor Neil Menzies, who was held many leadership roles in land science research. He served as chairman of the Australian Soy Science Society and vice president of the International Soy Science Society. Agriculture is like that, isn't it? A lot of the things we do are just, you know, we've got to be very crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shane Vietnam on BTC 10 NetFit. Today we have a talk with Mr. Mr. Neil Menzies, a scientist that have had worked in Vietnam for a really long time, since 1994, and he has conducted many studies on the land surveys of Vietnam. And he in he's here in the event of the celebrations of 40 years diplomatic relation between Vietnam and Australia to share about his knowledge and now we shall talk to him. Thank you Mr. Neil so much for having us here today. So can you share with our viewer about your experience in your expertise that is the land study? We need agriculture to produce food but at the same time we recognize that agriculture can do damage to our landscape. So a lot of the work that my research group does and, and with the Vietnamese scientists we work with here is trying to achieve an optimal balance there, trying to get good levels of productivity, trying to ensure that the farmers can make a good living from their land, but at the same time trying to make sure that the land's not degraded, that the farmer's children will have a farm to work on and that our children will have food. In this uh, seminar today, you will talk about the land degradations in the north of Vietnam. So can you share with our viewers the information of your topic? And the problem of soil erosion, so this is we, we plow up a field and when it rains, some of the soil washes away. And conservation agriculture, in very simplest terms, is about trying to leave as much residue of the old crop behind on the soil uh, not ploughing any more than is absolutely necessary. So it may be necessary for a, a plough to cut a, a slot to put fertiliser and seed in, but that's all we'd want to do. So Australian farmers have adopted these sort of farming techniques and our erosion problem has vanished. It's solved. So now let's come to Vietnam. And you see in Vietnam now um, farmers starting to grow in new areas of land. Um, so moving from the flatter areas of the valley bottoms up onto the slopes. And that's because the population in Vietnam is increasing. You need more food and the farmers are responding by growing crops over broader areas. But as they're moving onto that more steeply sloping land, the problem of soil erosion, eroding increases because the water's going to flow so much faster across that slopey land. So things that we've learned in Australia, we know that they work in concept but we need to work out a way in Vietnam that, that they can work here. And one of the really um, nice uh, techniques that, that my Vietnamese colleagues have developed, and so they've introduced using whippersnippers, you know these garden, or, um, they have a little motor and a rod that goes down and then a spinning wire which will chop up the vegetation. And so it's a, it's a simple technique, it's not an expensive machine for the farmers to buy, it's easy for them to use, they can use it on small areas, they can use it on steep slopes, and it very rapidly converts the residue of an old crop to material on the ground that they can then plant through. So can you point out some of the climate issues that may affect on the change of the farming approach in the current context of Vietnam? Uh, a couple of the big problems, both here in Vietnam and more broadly around the world, uh, nutrient rundown, in agricultural systems, so the, the problem that 
when we remove a crop, we remove some of the nutrients from the soil. And our use of fertiliser is often not sufficient to replace the nutrients that we've removed. And so globally, we have this problem of, of our soils becoming less and less fertile. And that's something that we need to do something about. So now in the next reportage, please look at the current farming approach, some of the popular farming approach that the Vietnamese farmer has been applied in Vietnam. Vietnam ranked 13 in top 16 countries most under the impact of climate change. In recent years, our country has been adversely affected by the disaster phenomena like typhoon, intense heat, floods, droughts, causing great losses in human lives, material possessions and especially creating major challenge for the agricultural sector towards sustainable development. Vietnam is focused on exploiting the advantage and making good use of tropical agriculture, constructions and development of specialized areas in the form of large-scale farms, camps, high-tech agricultural zone with international standards combining agricultural with industrial processing and preservations to create products to ensure domestic consumptions and boosting exports. Cây trồng bản địa như lúa, ngô, đậu tương, đậu xanh, chuối, gừng được người dân trồng nhiều năm nay thì có khả năng chịu hạn rất là tốt. Và người dân cũng có rất nhiều kinh nghiệm để canh tác trong điều kiện hạn, trong kiểu kiện rét. Trên cơ sở kiến thức đó thì chúng tôi trao đổi và cùng với người dân xây dựng những mô hình nồng ghép cả kiến thức hiện đại hay là những kỹ thuật tiên tiến với những kiến thức bản địa trên cơ sở sử dụng cái nguồn quỹ gen cây trồng bản địa. So with the amount of time that you have worked in Vietnam, can you share some of the achievement of the Vietnamese and the Australian scientists? Of a, a new Australian program where we intend to send our students um, to Vietnam, uh, so a reverse Colombo plan. And that that's a very deliberate strategy of trying to increase Australian students' experience. In the past, we've had Vietnamese students coming to Australia to increase their experience to give them new knowledge. I think it's a great idea for Australian students to come here to increase their knowledge. And all of these things will help to build and sustain that ongoing relationship between Australia and Vietnam. So that's what I'd list as the most important achievement. Undoubtedly, I could list 10 or 15 technical achievements because they're highly specific things about how you apply a particular type of fertilizer or you know, the genetics of a particular type of maize that we might want to grow, how we deal with some particular weed problem. That's not that interesting. But the big picture one I think is more interesting about how we as countries, how we as groups of scientists can work together. So what are the supports that the Australian scientist has given to our Vietnamese scientists as well as the farmers in terms of maybe know-how transfer, the experience and also about the conduct of research here in Vietnam? Uh, well, that, that's been the, uh, the real intention of, of um, the Australian aid, agricultural aid program into Vietnam. The real intention was to build up a strength of science in Vietnam to make sure that we weren't just solving that problem but that we were giving Vietnamese scientists the opportunity to learn um, the way that, that Australian scientists work and so once again I'd say that's the the real contributions you know the, the, the thing that's achieved by our scientists working together and in fact the thing that's achieved by Australian scientists working with American scientists and Brazilian scientists and Indian scientists is the transfer of knowledge the transfer of ways of solving particular problems nobody has um, the perfect set of answers or the perfect set of approaches we learn from each other in the process of working together with our Vietnamese scientists, what are the difficulties that you have faced so far? Maybe um, 
maybe during the, the process of collecting data, of researching, of maybe training towards the farmers, can you share to our viewer all of those information? So now that I've had a lot more experience, um, I spend a lot more time trying to learn why is the farmer doing this? What's his motivation for doing that? Um, why would he not want to do this? Okay. Why are these ladies planting this crop in this way when I think they would be better off planting it in this way? Now, when I was younger, um, I thought they were wrong. Now I think they probably understand something that I don't. So one of the things that we, we learn as we work more with people um, is, is that sense of what is, what is the system that we're looking at? Why does it work this way? And then as we introduce some change, what will the effect of that change be? So we should be very aware that you can't just pick up an idea from one place and put it in another place and expect it to work. One, one of the, I guess one of the challenges for Vietnamese science though has been building up the scientific resources in the country because that costs money and I see uh, increasingly over time investment by your government in new scientific research facilities, um, new equipment and, and increasingly well trained scientists, young scientists coming into the laboratories. And that's a big change. And lastly, being a very acknowledged scientist in this field, what, what can you advise for the Vietnamese scientists to overcome all of those obstacles that you have just mentioned previously? We're going to have more health challenges. Climate change will be a globally a, a very difficult thing for us to deal with. Um, we are using up the Earth's resources at a much higher rate than is sustainable. These are very, very big challenges which we need scientific solutions to. So globally, Vietnam, Australia, the United States, we all need the same thing and that is more engagement of students in the sciences and in mathematics, uh, more investment by our governments in educating those young people so that we have the new generations of very bright minds to solve our problems. Thank you, Mr. Neil Menzi, so much for all of your sharing today. And I'm very delighted to hear all about it. And also your sharing about your knowledge in the land study of Vietnam. Thank you. And that's the end of Sharing Vietnam today. Thank you so much for watching us. And I hope that you had got a lot of information about the current situation of the land study in Vietnam, as well as the farming approach that been applied here in Vietnam. Any questions and concerns, please email at sharingvietnam at vtc.vn. And for the last minute, please look at the highlights of the event um, celebrating 40 years of diplomatic relations between Vietnam and Australia. Thank you and see you again.